Καλημέρα σε όλους. Θα μιλήσω στα αγγλικά, γιατί όπως ακούσατε, αυτή είναι μια υπόθεση που φεύγει από τα όρια της χώρας μας και θέλουμε να μπορούν περισσότεροι άνθρωποι να τη δουν. Ξεκινώντας την ομιλία μου, επειδή είμαι μηχανικός και επειδή πολλοί από εμά έχουν συνηθίσει να τους αποκαλούν κάποιοι geeks and nerds, I will start with this symbol, which is why not. What is why not? Why not is the starting amount of energy resources that we have available in our planet. And if we will be able to get the slides going on right, you will be able to see something that would say that if we spend our resources without replenishment, they will soon go away, there will be nothing to use. This is pretty obvious, and stating the obvious is not as interesting. However, this is not the only problem that we are facing. When we spend all the energy resources, we don't have any more to use. It's okay. But at the same time, we are creating a problem, and this problem is called CO2. You put a lot of carbon in the atmosphere, and this is a factor that promotes further global warming. Combustion, the fire, the flame, is something which is intimately linked with our civilization. Ever since Prometheus stole the fire from the gods, and the gods cursed him that an eagle would eat his liver, and the liver would be regenerated in the evening, and then the eagle will eat a new liver in the morning, combustion is in our lives. It was not always bad. There is a very nice painting by Georgi Alkife, that has more than 30 smokestacks. When you have smokestacks, it means you have factories, you have a lot of progress, jobs, prosperity. So combustion is something good because the gods were using it and we stole it from the gods and we built our civilization on combustion. These days, combustion is something not so in, not so sexy. Everybody talks about renewables and we should not burn and we should be against the fire. Yet we don't have any alternative, and we try to find one. Our alternative, or at least until a few years back, by several people, was hydrogen. What is hydrogen? It's the simplest molecule that exists. It is the molecule that it is widely available in the planet, in, bound with water, and in the universe, but you cannot find it alone. You cannot drill a hole in the ground and get hydrogen out. Yet, when you use hydrogen as an energy source, as an energy carrier, you don't produce any pollution. So it has zero carbon footprint. So we decided to produce a technology that allows us to produce hydrogen without carbon footprint. This technology is a very old technology, in a sense. It was used by Archimedes during the invasion of Syracuse by the Roman fleet. He con concentrated the solar radiation onto the ships of the Romans and burned them. And this gives us a first hint on how to use the solar energy in a not so, uh, let's say, established fashion. Most of you are familiar with photovoltaics, where you convert solar energy into electricity. Here, we use solar energy as heat, and this is hydrogen technology. We take mirrors, we concentrate the solar heat onto a reactor, and in this reactor, we are able to split the water molecule and convert it into hydrogen. It sounds simple, but it is not, and I will have the chance to explain maybe a little bit more today. This technology has been in development in the last 10 years in our laboratory, the Aerosol and Particle Technology Laboratory here in Thessaloniki, in the Center for Research and Technology in collaboration with several other colleagues, collaborators, and also foreign collaborators. The technology looks like this. There is a central tower. On top of the tower, there is a reactor. The mirrors that are around this plant concentrate the solar radiation there, and we drive chemical reactions in this reactor, namely the splitting of water and making hydrogen. 
Here, you will have a chance to see this in action, what I just said. This field around the tower is called the heliostat field. These mirrors move and follow the sun. The radiation is concentrated and the water molecule enters this reactor where it gets deprived. The, the oxygen is stolen by the material that it is in the reactor. Then when the radiation is increased, we can go to a higher temperature and then we can get the oxygen away. So this is a cyclic process that allows us to create all the time hydrogen from splitting of the water molecule. And then eventually we should be able to have an infrastructure that allows us to distribute this hydrogen. Eventually we should be able to have vehicles that are able to burn hydrogen and then we can use it to power our needs. However, we are not there. And we are not there because this is a classic chicken and egg problem. Can we have the infrastructure? Or can we have the end use separate from each other? The answer is no. We must have both of them at the same time. And whenever you have chicken and egg problems, as you know, you cannot solve them. The only way to solve a chicken and egg problem is to introduce a new actor. And the new actor here is our good friend, CO2. CO2 can be your friend because CO2 is a source of carbon. Many people are against CO2 and we should eliminate it from our discussion because it causes global warming. It's true, but it's also a source of carbon. So we must treat CO2 not as a waste, but as a resource. And what we did is we put in the same reactor CO2, we split CO2 and we make it into another molecule. This molecule is called carbon monoxide. The same way that our reactor steals oxygen from the water molecule, the same way our reactor steals one oxygen atom from CO2 and it produces CO. CO and hydrogen can be used together and generate other compounds, other chemical species. These chemical species are exactly the same as the hydrocarbons that we have been using since you know, the Industrial Revolution. So you can generate carbon neutral solar fuels using its raw material, water, CO2, plus the energy of the sun. This is not our discovery. This is well known from the beginning of the century. The Germans in the war and the South Africans developed the technology to convert carbon monoxide and hydrogen into fuels. What we do is to provide solar carbon monoxide and solar hydrogen, that is, sources for energy that are completely carbon neutral. In that way, we can envision a future power plant where you could have as raw materials sun, water, and CO2, and you could be producing chemicals and fuels, not only fuels, but also chemicals, plastics. The polymers that we use every day that come from oil could come from that process as well. Electricity, plus also you can have energy to desalinate water. This is a completely different approach than the approach I introduced in the beginning of my talk when I talked about replenishment um, of our resources. This is a very unique way to recycle CO2 back into energy. And this is what the plants do, but here we do it in a very different way, a more intense way. Okay, you might say this is interesting scientifically. Maybe you have done also some more work on that. What's in it for the general public? And I would like to take the rest of the time to share with you my personal vision on this, how this technology could change our lives. You know, we have a very important crisis today in Europe. It's the war between the North and the South. The North is industrially developed. They produce a lot of CO2 and they have much more money than we South and South. But the people in the South, the pigs, so-called, they have the sun. They have CO2, we have the sun, but we have also the technology to use the sun in a way that allows us to make CO2 back into a fuel. The only thing we are missing is the network. This is an energy network. It's an energy grid that it is completely biomimetic. It looks exactly 
like the veins and the arteries that you have in your body. We need pipelines that bring CO2 down south and pipelines that will bring back to the north fuel that has been converted with our technology, with hydrogen technology, back into an energy resource. This way, one can dream what the new scientist said about this technology, that this is the next best thing to oil. Currently, we are designing a new installation, a one megawatt plant, and my dream is to be able to have this plant here in Thessaloniki. We have very nearby, at 150 kilometers from here, in the Ptolemais Basin, 70% of the power production of the country. There is a lot of CO2 that it is being produced, and something needs to be done. This CO2 could be transported nearby, converted back into fuel, and then reused back in these plants. This way, we should be able to have energy independence, environmental compliance, and sustainability. Furthermore, if one had, let's say, made a conspiracy to make Thessaloniki a central energy metropolis, one could not have made it better than the current situation. In Thessaloniki, in Thessaloniki we have refineries, we have raw materials available. The material that we use to make our reactor is rust. If you know Neil Young's song, Rust Never Sleeps, this is exactly what happens. You use iron oxides, doped oxides, rust, to make the reactor. There is a lot of rust in the industrial area. We need also water. There is a lot of water that it is being poured in the sea from the wastewater treatment plant of Thessaloniki. Yearly, the city emits an enormous amount of waste that could be used back into this technology. Fortunately, we don't have to make the same mistake that other species before us occupied the planet. As you know, the dinosaurs were before us here. They were debating about whether to develop the technology to intercept asteroids. I don't know if they were successful. Probably not, because not so many of them are around to tell their story. But we don't have to have their fate. We can do it. Therefore, my why not story is sun, water, and CO2 make solar fields. Let's do it here. Thank you.